Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update, update time, 13 months. If you're new to this channel, I do these types of videos every single month on my Bull Mastiff Tua. I used to do them weekly and I changed to monthly once he turned a year just because everything was kind of slowing down with growth and everything else. And I do these types of videos just to try and create a great log of information, not only for myself to look back on, but also for anybody that might be interested in the Bull Mastiff breed. The main things that I touch on in these videos are his growth, his height and his weight, his barking, his drooling, his energy levels, socialization, what I'm doing to socialize him, and his food, what I'm feeding him. Um, I do feed him a mix of kibble and raw. And those are just kind of the main things that I, I looked at when I was interested in getting a bull mastiff. You know, how, how much do they grow? Uh, what are their energy levels like? What's their barking like? Things like that. So I've just kind of created a great log of information on a week by week basis and uh, now month by month on what you could expect if you're interested in the breed, um, if you currently have one. And uh, you could you could just go look back if you're curious, you know, for example, I wonder how big they are at 13 weeks old. Well, you can go look back at my video and I'll tell you exactly how big he was at 13 weeks old. Um, so there's just great log now out there for anybody that uh, is interested in the breed, has, has a bull mastiff or anything like that. So go ahead and check out all the videos if you are interested in the breed. These videos are getting a little bit longer now, this format of video anyway, since I try and cram everything from one month into it instead of uh, one week like I used to. So I really do appreciate anybody that sticks around and watches the whole video. Um, awesome. But I usually start these out with uh, just some new things that I notice throughout the month besides those six main things that I hit on every single week, which is growth, food, socialization, drooling, energy, and barking. Um, the first thing that uh, was new to this month kind of stuck out to me more, uh, and I've talked about it before, but it's been a little while, is his marking or his peeing on stuff. He marks on absolutely everything when he goes outside, whether it's in our yard or out on walks or or whatever. Um, it's almost to the point that like when we let him out to go to the bathroom, he's not peeing unless it is on something. He will still pee in the yard, you know, just in the middle of the yard at times, but I would say 90% of the time uh, he's peeing on stuff. And I want to say that that is uh, chalked up to him being unfixed. I think that's a pretty common not necessarily issue, but pretty common um, occurrence with dogs that are unfixed and Tua is unfixed. Uh, so not really an issue per se, uh, but sometimes he will pee, you know, on the kids' outdoor toys, things like that. So they, those got to get cleaned up at the end of the day or hosed down or whatever. And up to this point, he had never peed or marked on anything inside the house, but that did change just a couple of weeks ago. We found a spot in my wife's closet. We actually have a black light that we use to find pee spots because for one, my wife does daycare. Um, so just you never know with messes and things like that with little kids. And then also our, our min pin has this weird thing where every once in a while she'll pee in my wife's closet for whatever reason, like if there's dirty clothes or something like that on the floor. So we look for that, you know, kind of periodically in there. So we were looking for that in there and we noticed a bigger spot with kind of a line, you know, going across the floor. And it's like, okay, well, that was obviously Tua. That was definitely not our, our little min pin. So I'm guessing he smelled a spot in there that she had peed on for whatever reason. And then he marked that. As far as I know, it's the first time he's ever done that inside. I wish I would have caught him in the act so that I could have shut it down. You know, kind of like when you're potty training a dog, you get crazy over dramatic when you catch him doing it. And uh, bull mastiffs, like a lot of dogs, pretty sensitive. So they, you know, if you go crazy over dramatic and make it seem like it's the worst thing in the world, they just feel like crap and feel bad. And it's pretty easy to train them that way. So really wish I would have caught them in the act, but I didn't. Uh, but it should be pretty easy to kind of shut this situation down just by keeping a closer eye on him and giving him less free reign of the, of the house like we kind of have been. So we'll do that. We'll, we'll make sure to close doors and just kind of give him less free reign. Uh, no big deal with that. Another thing from the month that I noticed is Tua absolutely loves the snow um, and the colder weather in general, but the snow, he just, he loves to eat it. He loves to jump in it, run in it, play in it. Now that the weather's colder, um, I believe the last update, pup date I did for the one year, 
I said it was in the 20s and 30s. Uh, now where we're living, it's getting you know close to that zero degrees to below zero, especially with the wind chills. But he still absolutely loves being outside, loves the cooler weather, and definitely loves the snow. Um, he'll pretty much stay out there until his paws go numb or we have to drag him inside. And he just kind of comes limping back to the door, uh, kind of confused, not knowing why uh, his paws don't work and he can't feel his paws. And then the last thing new to the month that I wanted to update you guys on was the skin infection. He had that bacterial skin infection. For those of you that saw that video, um, you're kind of filled in on it. For those of you that did not, go ahead, watch it if you're, if you're interested. It's been a couple of weeks now since then with his antibiotics and with that shampoo. Uh, I will be going back to the vet for that couple week checkup now in just a couple of days here. I believe uh, it's on Wednesday, I think, this week that we're going back. But it seems to have cleared up quite a bit. His, his coat's definitely much softer and stuff, but that's because I've been bathing him, you know, every other day, like the vet said. And the, the skin definitely seems like it's not as dry. I did up the amount of fish oil that I was giving him along with the antibiotics. Hopefully we go back to the vet and they scrape that skin and test it and say, you know, the bacterial infection has cleared up. Still did not ever find out what may have caused it. But thanks to all of you guys commenting and stuff, I, I think it's probably something to do with food, uh, the kibble that he's eating. No idea for sure. Uh, maybe I'll end up getting back to more of a full raw diet sooner than I ever anticipated. We'll see, maybe it was just a fluke one time thing also, but uh, time will tell. So that's pretty much everything new from the month and now I will go ahead and start touching on all the things that I normally do, starting with his height and his weight like usual. So at 12 months, one year old, Tua was 132 pounds. I just got him weighed in now and he is at 134 and a half. So he's up two and a half pounds from uh, 12 months to 13 months. Not a very big gain at all, um, all things considered, if you go through an entire month. If you haven't checked out my video, or if you're not familiar with the channel, but my video where I showed um, all the stats on his weight and stuff, he used to gain four or five pounds in a week when he was, you know, really, young and growing very quickly so two and a half pounds in a month is like absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things but as he's aged uh he's he's definitely slowed down putting that weight on that's completely normal they can't continue just to put on four or five pounds every single week uh so so that's good uh he's definitely continuing to fill out nice and slow uh, it's becoming more and more noticeable as i look back on older pictures you know throughout the month and videos that i've taken and things like that He's still definitely on the skinnier side, uh, definitely has a nice narrow waist, so he still has a long way to go as, as far as filling out goes. Um, definitely nice and lean and, and, uh, and skinnier. His height at uh, one year old was 29 and a half inches. And you know, it's kind of hard to tell because I just eyeball this like I always say, so there's a little bit of room for human error here. But as far as I could tell, that was unchanged. To me, it looked like uh, basically 29 and a half inches still. And I really don't anticipate that to go up much more, if at all, because he's he's already uh, well above the, the breed standard for bull mastiff as far as height goes. I believe males uh, are supposed to be up to 28 inches, and he's already at 29 and a half. So very, very tall for a bull mastiff. Food is the next thing that we'll touch on. This month for raw food, we fed him ground turkey, ground beef, chicken breast, chicken gizzards, chicken liver, beef liver, eggs, strawberries, and carrots. And if you're a regular viewer of this channel, this is all very familiar to you. I do about a 50-50 split as far as raw food and kibble goes. But as I said earlier, if I find out that his skin condition was a result of his kibble, then you know maybe I'll start transitioning to even more like a 75-25 split or maybe even full raw. We'll go. See, we'll see how that turns out. Um, but but raw raw diet and raw food uh, is very good for the dog. It gives them a lot of different nutrients that they wouldn't normally get through just their regular kibble. And obviously, some dogs react a lot better to it than kibble. 
And uh, I'm, I'm not an expert, as I always say, as far as raw feeding goes, but do your own research. Uh, do a lot of research, too, and you'll probably be surprised like I was at all the benefits that there can be to raw diet. Um, one thing with that, with the vegetables and stuff too, I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned in the past, but stay away from the canned vegetables because those are going to be higher in sodium and uh, you don't want your dog to have a lot of sodium in their diet. So stick with the uh, the fresh or frozen veggies if you're going to feed veggies or, or fruit for that matter. Socialization is another thing that I touch on every single video. Uh, this was a very, very good month for it with it being the holidays and my daughter also had her birthday is in this month of December as well. So we had tons of new people over uh, that are new to Tua people anyway. And I've, I've mentioned this many times before. He is such a people dog. He absolutely loves people and he can get overly excited when new people come or just people in general. So when we're having people over to the house, I keep him on his leash for, you know, maybe the first 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes, just so that I'm able to control him. I don't want him jumping up on people that don't know him, especially because he, I mean, he's a 134 pound dog now, so he can, he can hurt people unintentionally, step on their feet, stuff like that. And like I said, he's very excited at first, so keeping him on that leash is a, a great help with that. And then once he calms down, everything's cool, and he just kind of walks around and acts like he's known those people his whole life. So I would definitely suggest that to people. Um, just keep your dog on a leash if they get a little bit overly excited, especially if they're a big dog. And then uh, besides having all the people over, you know, which is great for socialization this month, uh, we did take him on a few walks as well, but... It's getting so much colder here that we're not going out for as long of walks and uh, we're not seeing as many people or dogs on those walks either. Maybe I'll try and get them into a couple stores this, this next month here just to get them exposed to more people and different uh, smells and sounds and situations again. It's, it's probably been a good month or so since we've gotten them into a store. So that'd probably be a good idea and even just walking them around in those stores for some warm walking where you know we can't really right now with how cold it is. So I'll, I'll probably try and do that and I'll update you guys on that on the next video. Energy would be the next thing that we'll touch on and that's kind of been the same as usual, same as it has been for the last several months that I've updated you guys on. Uh, he still has those same two windows basically where his energy level is highest and that's the first two three hours when we are awake in the morning. And then kind of the last two, three hours around that dinner time or before we go to bed. And uh, the rest of the time, you know, he's he's pretty mellow, pretty lazy for the most part. Um, definitely will have his days where it's up. But I'd say uh, in general, just those two windows is when it's higher. And I'll also definitely say that I noticed that when we're indoors, which is a lot more now since the weather's cooling down, like I continue saying, that he's becoming less and less active um, regardless of the time of day. Uh, lots of the times now he'll eat his breakfast and when normally he'd be kind of high strung for a couple hours, he'll just kind of go down to chewing and falling back to sleep at times. Not every day, but it's definitely becoming more and more noticeable. And same thing at night, he'll come in from going to the bathroom after eating his dinner and when normally that's higher and he wants to play and kind of run around and mess with us and the kids, he's just chewing or laying back down. Uh, so overall, gradually going down, not crazy noticeable, but definitely noticeable enough. But I will say the funny thing with that is on the flip side of that, when we're outdoors, it's as high as it's ever been or maybe higher than it's ever been. If I go outside, he is running around me wanting to play kind of jumping up on me, trying to get me to uh, mess with him back, uh, throw stuff for him to go fetch or whatever. But uh, like I said, indoors is definitely going down and outdoors for whatever reason is high or higher than it's ever been. So just, just kind of funny, those two uh, opposites. But overall, like I said, definitely going down and uh, kind of falling into that breed standard of uh, being a little bit on the lazier side I'm sure we'll still have another year or two of his energy like this where it's still higher outside, but as he ages, I'm sure even outdoors, it'll, it'll go down some. Barking is the next thing that we'll touch on. 
So I've said in all these videos for a long time that he's not much of a barker, but it's definitely going up. And so this last month, same thing. He's not much of a barker, except for one situation. And it's been increasing a lot as of late. And that situation is when he is in our backyard. It's like almost to the point where every single time we let him out to go play or let him out to go to the bathroom, he's pretty much barking at some point every single time that we let him out in the backyard. It's never for like an extended period of time, but it's enough to like, we'll go out there and be like, hey, Tua, you know, knock it off, stop. And it's kind of odd because like, when we're on walks and he'll see people or dogs or hear people or dogs, he never barks. Um, if we're inside and he can see dogs, you know, walking by, never barks. If the mail comes to the door or like Amazon delivery or pizza delivery or something, never barks. He'll get excited and wag his tail and run to the door and like look at the people or the dogs or whatever through the window, but never barks. The only time is when he's in our backyard and he's hearing sounds and I'm thinking maybe it's because our yard is completely fenced off and it's like a privacy style fence so you can't see what's on the other side and he's just reacting to sounds and noises and since he's unable to see what they are he's barking because it, it's possibly a threat you know maybe that's the guarding instinct it's just it's really weird I, I think it is that fence because even when he's in our front yard and stuff, I'll have him out on his long leash if I'm shoveling snow or something like that. And he'll hear dogs barking and he's not reacting to it. It's it's literally only in our backyard, guys. It's Maybe he's very um, guarding of our backyard, very protective of it. I, I don't know. Do you guys have any similar situations like this? If you're a uh, bull mastiff owner, does your bull mastiff only bark when he's fenced in in his backyard and none or no barking beyond that because that's that's kind of the situation where two is falling into it's it's kind of strange kind of odd but uh with that i guess i'll update you guys by saying he's still not much of a barker except for in that one situation when he's in our backyard uh and sometimes not even barking at anything anything obvious anyway noises off in the distance i guess but uh kind of funny so the last thing is drooling and like I keep saying, this one's very, very repetitive because it's pretty much unchanged, but I want to keep touching on it because it's very important for people that are looking into the Bull Mastiff breed. How big of droolers are they? Well, in my situation with Tua, 90% of his drooling is when he's drinking water and it does become extremely messy during those times. So if you don't want water and drool all over your floor or where you're feeding him, you just need to be standing there with a rag, paper towel, just something to wipe their face when they're finished drinking. The other times that he does drool is when he's stressed or excited or he's hot and panting. But again, not even close compared to the amount that he's drooling immediately after the water, after he's drinking water and it's pouring out of his jowls. Another time that he'll drool is uh, sometimes if he'll, he'll watch me, you know, preparing his food and he knows that he's going to eat and it'll start drooling or the dr dr drool will start dripping down from his jowls at that point. But that's typical to a lot of big dogs. If they see uh, food and they're anticipating getting fed, they'll drool. So that's not you know, uncommon for any breed and not specific to a bull mastiff by any means. But he's definitely not a dog that when he's just lounging around the house, he drools all day. Uh, like, like the stereotype is with uh, mastiffs, uh, bull mastiffs and, and other large dog breeds. Just want to get that out there that it's not like he wakes up in the morning and is drooling from the time he wakes up to the time he goes to bed. Only certain situations, um, you know when those situations are going to be for the most part and you can prepare for that as needed. But other than that guys, that's all I have for this week's or this month's update pup date, uh, month 13. Thanks if you stayed and watched the whole thing. Like I said in the beginning, these are going to be longer since I'm trying to cram a month's worth of information in where I used to only do a week. Really do appreciate it guys. Have a good rest of your day and take care.